This is the Ferrari 296 GTB, and it's a little bit like Max Verstappen because everyone's saying how it's just so much better than its father, the SF90. But is that true? Well, in this video, we're going to find out because I'm going to talk you around the exterior, the interior. I'm going to take it for a drive. And of course, I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour and over the standing quarter mile. Because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, Car Wow. The 296 GTB is a beautiful looking car. It's low, it's wide, it's purposeful, and it's got loads of elements on it, all designed to improve airflow. So here at the front, you have this really interesting cutout section in the bumper and this little spoiler here, which helps feed air underneath the car. And you've got a flat underbody with various veins which help channel the air underneath the car. So you get cold air over the top. That's really important. I'll come to it in a moment. First though, look at this. Air is fed into these ducts integrated into the headlights and that sends cold air to cool the brakes. Then you've got this little vent here and there's no fakery, the exit vent there and that helps smooth airflow down the side of the car. I love the design of the dormers, they're like antennas on a wasp. You've got quite a big side window and this swoopy design with a floating roof. Sort of reminds me a little bit of a Lamborghini Miura actually. Then there's the big vents here which feed air into the engine. You've also got this scoop on the roof which sends the airflow over here and towards the rear spoiler and to these radiators at the back. Really nice swooping curvaceous design. Then here at the rear once again more vents to help let hot air out the back of the exhaust and there it is the central exhaust system. That is actually just a surround the real exhaust is inside but it all looks very very purposeful and of course you've got a big rear diffuser once again to help with the aerodynamics of this car. It looks really expensive but that's because it is really expensive. Starting price £241,000 and that's before options which I'll get onto later on. Now if you're thinking about buying a new car such as a Ferrari you probably need to sell your current car. You can do that through CarWow so click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go check it out. All you have to do is upload some photos of your car, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Then just pick the highest offer, they'll come to your house, set the car away and put the money straight into your account. It's dead easy. If you want to do that at a later date, just simply Google help me car wow and we will help you silly car. Here on the inside, the 296 GTB has a very curvaceous sporty feeling dash now the quality is generally pretty lovely but i have noticed something the first is that the 296 seems to be a little bit wonky and then there's some puckering of the leather around this air vent that's a shame because it does otherwise feel very solid and nicely put together it's also very driver focused so you've got this big pod here for the driver and the steering wheel that has all the controls on it like a formula one steering wheel so you've got your indicators on there you've got your controls for your windscreen wipers you have your lights on there everything to control the cars on here like cruise control things like that, that you normally have one of the steering wheels but you also have the four controls for the infotainment system which is delivered in this big screen here which also houses all the dials and readouts for the car itself so to operate it you have to press a touch sensitive button and it doesn't seem to there we go i'm starting to make it work now now the system itself as you can see look it's a little bit on the laggy side i'm going to change views i'm not the biggest fan of it let's have a look at some of this information along here it's just all a little bit tricky to use not enjoying it much to tell you the truth you also have a special display for the passenger there so they can look at things such as the satellite navigation they can check out stuff such as come on work the performance of the car so they can see how quick you're going you might be lying to them but they'll be able to see exactly how fast you're going now something else to note is that your climate control is operated through these buttons here you can also do it through this button on the main screen but a shortcut is to just do temperature using these but once again touch sensitive and not actually all that sensitive so come come on that's it what down here on the other side we've got some of the controls for the lights and the door mirrors once again touch sensitive buttons quite unresponsive and annoying to yeah to use <laughs> now down the side here we've got some buttons for opening the front boot for opening the fuel filler cap and the other one for opening the charging port because obviously this is a plug-in hybrid here you have your center console with your storage so there's some storage here and you've got a usb input there and usb input there as well that's the one that you connect your phone to though you can only connect one kind of phone more on that in a bit there's your window switches here and then this which is the gear selector so it's designed to look like an old-fashioned ferrari open manual gearbox gate but 
it's just for your control. So you've got reverse there, you've got automatic mode, you've got manual mode, and you've got launch control. And you feel like you're going to be able to slide these, but you can't. You just press them a little bit, and they do that, and you have this little light that goes shooting down to show that you've selected the mode. Then moving down here, you've got your cup holder, which won't hold large bottles. Speaking of which, the door bins, they won't hold large bottles either. You've got a big area there for charging your mobile phone, though it doesn't quite fit mine flush. So it's working. Oh, no, no, no. Is it working? No, no, anyway, I'll give up with that. Now, if you do need to carry a big bottle in the car, there is always this storage space behind the seat. So there is quite a bit of room behind there and you've got some nets that you can put things in like that to keep them secure when you're going very quickly. However, there is some more space in the front boot. As you can see, storage under the bonnet is actually pretty generous. So it's 201 litres, which is 50 litres more than the McLaren Artura has. It's easily big enough for me to get in. I'm a bit like a cat, you know, if I see like an open space or box or something like that, I just have to climb in it, which is just embarrassing. Can't help myself though, can't help myself at all. So this is much bigger than sitting in the front boot of a Porsche 911, because it's only got 132 litres of space. However, with a Porsche 911, obviously you've got those back seats you can fold down, so there's a lot of storage there. So yeah, the Porsche 911 Turbo S is still overall more practical than this car. In fact, if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. Anyway, that brings me on to five annoying things about the Ferrari 296 GTB. While Apple CarPlay is standard on the 296, you can't get Android Auto, not at all. It's not even available if you pay extra for it. No Android Auto. Does that mean that Ferrari owners can't have Android phones? As standard, this exhaust shield is normally a shiny metallic silver. However, the owner of this car decided within one day of ownership to pay extra to have this optional upgraded darker colour fitted. Reason being, they found out that the residue from the exhaust discoloured the shiny metallic silver, which just looked rubbish. It's pretty unfair that they then had to pay extra to get this. This would come as standard, really, if that's a problem with the car. Because it's a hybrid, sometimes it'll cut its engine and you forget that you've still got the ignition on, then you get out of the car and then shut the door and it warns you. And that makes you just jump out of your skin. It's good to have that warning though. However, sometimes you go get back in and yeah, go out again and you think, well, the ignition's still on, I haven't done anything. Will it warn me? No. And then you can just like walk off and it, yeah, it's still on with the ignition. I don't know why it didn't warn me that time. Why aren't you warning me? Let's try again. Will you warn me this time? So I just pressed one of the buttons and it started the engine up. Let's see if it'll warn me this time. Might do, might not. There's probably some logic to it, but I can't figure it out. The reversing camera is mounted really low down, which means it soon gets covered in road grime. But unfortunately, it doesn't have a little wash system, so you actually have to get out of the car and wipe it with your finger before you can actually reverse. This car is pretty much straight out of the dealership. It's brand new, yet already this rubber around this small bit of window has discolored. It looks like it's off an old car. It's not all negative though. Here's five good things about this car. The car has an active rear spoiler, which will automatically go up and down depending on what speed you're going. It can provide a maximum of 100 kilos of downforce. It also acts as an air brake to aid stability when you're doing hard stops. This is the key for the latest Lamborghini Huracan. Look, it says Lamborghini on it, but it's actually a key for an Audi. It's quite plasticky. This is the 296's key. So it feels expensive, made of metal. It's got the beautiful Ferrari emblem on it and the back is leather. And there's this special place where you put it in the car so you can enjoy looking at it in all its Ferrari Italian goodness. The 296 GTB is the most fuel efficient Ferrari ever made. It's capable of 44 miles per gallon because it's a plug-in hybrid, it also has reasonably low carbon dioxide emissions. So it's rated at 149 grams per kilometer of CO2. By comparison, a Volkswagen Golf R emits 165 grams per kilometer. You know what that means, don't you? It means that this Ferrari actually costs less in road tax each year than that Golf. Being a Ferrari, there are no soft limiters on this engine, so you can rev it all the way to the red line when you're stationary and enjoy the sound of this glorious V6. So have a listen to this, rev it up. Oh, 
I think I just came. The driving modes are controlled all through this really handy Manatino switch, which was lovely to use. So you start off with wet mode, then there's sport mode, then there's race mode, things are gradually getting more aggressive. Then there's traction control off mode, so you can spin up the tires, but you still have the safety net of stability control to stop you spinning out. But if you want to, you can turn that off as well by pressing and holding it there for ESC off. Also what you can do to the Manatino switch is press it in, put the car into bumpy road mode, which slackens off the suspension. Neat. So it's also neat if you're going over a bumpy road, you're going to want the optional nose lift. So press down, it rises up at the front so you can get over speed limits without damaging the nose. That option costs £2,720, which brings me on to the options fitted to this very car. Let's see what they are and how much they add up to in total. Embroidered floor mats, £640. Adaptive headlights, £1,600. Skidderia Ferrari shields on the wings, £880 as well. Brake calipers painted black instead of the standard yellow, £1,080. Rear diffuser in carbon fibre, £5,600. Carbon side skirts, £4,080. Ferrari dedication plate, £360. Alcantara carpet and door inlays, £2,800. Forged aluminium, matte finished, beautiful alloy wheels, 20 inches in diameter, £3,840. These design seats are an extra £1,600. Another £560 for this red flash on the seat. And then if you want the prancing horse, that's another £600. You have to pay an extra £3,360 if you want them electrically operated. Alcantara in the middle of the seat, £880. This lovely metallic Rosso Magma red paint, £15,600. Carbon fibre steering wheel with LED shift lights, £2,400. All that extra equipment is actually listed out here on this plaque inside the car's front boot. When I was specking up my very own new Porsche 911 GT3 RS. The potential options I'm fitting to that could come to a similar total. If you want to find out exactly what the options are that I'm thinking of getting on that car and the spec that I'm going to be going for, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to see my video about my new Porsche 911 GT3 RS. Okay, let's see what the 296 GTB is like to drive. Whoa! Oh my gosh, oh my god, it's responsive and just relentlessly fast. Oh, the performance though. If I didn't know, I wouldn't be able to tell really that this was a hybrid. It just seems to just fizz with energy. Obviously, there's no lag because the electric motor is just making sure that any turbo lag is filled in with torque from the electric motor, it's just so good. And then when that engine's on song and fully on boost, my God, does it shove you back into your seat and the gear shifts, lightning, lightning, lightning fast. They've done a really good job of just like blending the whole system together. It's so effortlessly fast. <laughs> and it sounds good. First, can do that thing, pull both pedals together and then rev it when you're cruising through town. <laughs> <laughs> or of course I could just go into electric only mode and then be completely silent. I, I don't know. What do you want to do? It's actually weird just driving in electric only mode. It's got enough performance and it's, you know, it's perfect for around town. Anyway, sod that. Let's go back into fast mode. Here we are. The way the power builds from low down in the rev range is just incredible. What I can't believe about this car is the suspension. It just seems to glide down the road. I mean, those are some nasty little potholes there. It just deals with it. And that's without putting it into bumpy road mode. If I go into bumpy road mode like that, now it's even softer. It's not soft, it's firm, but it's fair. And it's, it, it's compliant, it's witchcraft. Anyway, let's go back into just the normal setting. The steering, it's quick, but not too quick. It just gives you a lot of confidence. The car itself as well, the balance in it. Probably quite weight of 1,470 kilos, but that's dry weight. I don't know why they quote that, no one else does. With fluids, it's about 1,600 kilos. So it's not the lightest. 
but it doesn't feel heavy when you're driving it. It's very responsive. Oh, oh my gosh, it's so good. And the chassis balance, it just seems so stable and predictable. Oh, and you can control it on the throttle, it starts to rotate and the back end comes round, you apply a bit of throttle just to sit the back down. Oh, it's so good. So, so good. Have I seen how good it is? Have I? Just had a warning flash up that I'm running out of petrol. <laughs> so much for the old 44 miles to the gallon. This thing is drinking fuel like nobody's business the way I'm driving it. I'm surprised by the brakes because if no one had told me that this car is brake by wire, I wouldn't have known. They feel natural. Yeah, I'm actually not connected to the brakes in any way with my right foot. Let's go into more like civilized manner. I'm going to put it into hybrid, hybrid, hybrid. And what am I going to do? I'm going to go automatic for the gearbox. There we go. And bumpy road mode. So this is like your sensible person driving. Let's see how responsive it is. The automatic gearbox. Yeah. Sometimes with hybrids, you know, when you put your foot down, there's like this delay while the electric motor, the petrol engine and the gearbox have to work together to figure out what they want to do with this it doesn't seem to have any kind of delay it's like they're in perfect harmony here we go like 20 mile an hour just cruising around it's obviously doing it on battery power flooring it want to go quick and it's on it straight away actually that gives me an idea let's do some performance testing the 296 GTB is powered by a 3 litre twin turbo V6 with 663 horsepower, which is mated to an electric motor with 167 horsepower, so you have a combined 830 horsepower. Maximum torque is 740 Newton meters. The system drives the rear wheels for an 8 speed dual clutch automatic gearbox with launch control. So let's find out exactly how quick this car is. Starting with it being in electric drive mode, so here we go electric propulsion alone, it can do a maximum of 84 miles an hour under electric power alone and a distance of 16 miles though probably not if you're going 84 miles an hour now let's see what happens i'm going to launch it three two one go so you can actually floor the throttle and it doesn't kick the engine in it's just purely electric only mode here comes 60 miles an hour i can feel it changing gear 9.49 it will only run in up to fourth gear in electric only mode let's see if we can do the quarter mile there we go 17.37 seconds for the quarter mile in electric only mode it's all right it's like an oldish hot hatch now i'm going to run it in hybrid mode so this is in normal driving mode and it will favor the electric motor most of the time it'll let you run around on electric power alone but if you need a bit more acceleration it will bring the petrol engine into life so let's see what it does <laughs> Control engine in straight away, off we go. Oh, it feels quick. 0.63.35 seconds. Uh, what's the quarter mile? 10.76. There's some other figures I'm noting down as well, which are quite interesting. So 60 to 100 takes 2.77 seconds in hybrid mode, and 0 to 200 kilometers an hour is 8.59 seconds. Let's see if we can go quicker because Fry actually says this car should be able to do 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds and 0 to 200 kilometers an hour in 7.3 seconds. Now I'm going to go into performance mode. So that'll give me the engine running full time. So I've got as much performance as possible. Also, it allows you then to go into launch control mode. Now let's see what happens. So engage launch. Here we go. Oof, that feels quicker. Yeah, not 63.07. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, 10.36 to the quarter mile. And interestingly, 60 to 100 was quicker, 2.49 seconds. 0 to 200 kilometers an hour, 7.85 seconds. Not still quite the times that Ferrari states, but maybe there's a reason for that. What I'm gonna do now is going to qualify mode. What that does is unleash the full power of the entire system. You see, even in performance mode, it keeps a little bit of battery power back so that you've always got some in reserve. In qualify mode, it doesn't. And so as a result, you get the full 830 horsepower. I think in performance mode, it curtails it back by about 30 horsepower. Let's see if that makes a difference. So I'm gonna launch it again. Here we go. Oh, 
three seconds dead to 60. Quarter mile, what's he gonna do? 10.31 on the quarter mile. So, quicker quarter mile time, 10.31. Not 60, a little bit quicker, three seconds. 60 to 100, 2.5 seconds, so a little bit less than before. I don't know why that is. And 0 to 200, 7.82. It did get quicker. Those times are actually impressive and not far off what Ferrari claims. I think without a little bit of slip from the start, it would have done the numbers. Speaking of which, let's check out the braking performance now. What I'm gonna do is measure it, see how long it takes to brake from 100 miles an hour, but also from 60 miles an hour once it's braking. And the difference between the two will scare the heck out of you. So here we go. I'm gonna get just above 100, but it'll register once I'm going at 100. So here we go. What did it do? 100 to zero was 94 meters, but the part 60 to nor was just 31 meters. Just 31 meters. 31 meters stopping from 60 is really, really good. But that does bring home to you the effect of speed. You know, for 40 mile an hour extra speed, the actual stopping distance has tripled. So then what's my final verdict on the Ferrari 296 GTB? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, I reckon you should avoid it. It's a load of rubbish. Actually, that's a lie. You should just go right ahead and buy it if you can afford it, because this is the best Ferrari currently on sale. Anyway, I hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know if you agree with my verdict by voting in the bin comment. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to Car Wow to sell your car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Thanks for watching.